don't think I ever saw you run a 1500. I certainly never saw you run a 5000. 12 and a half <laughs> laps of the track is a tough old distance and at altitude doubly tough. Oh yeah, yeah. You would hardly see me run the 1500. Just my club, definitely. But uh, yeah, the 5000 meters, the amount of training you've got to put into that. You've got to work on the speed, obviously the speed endurance, the things that obviously meet in the middle as well. But uh, at altitude, Tim, that, that must have been really tough. How many times would you have competed? Did you compete in a major championships at altitude? No, no, it was, it was almost unheard of back then. And, and, and frankly, it still has been. I'm trying to think if since Mexico 1968, there has been a major championships uh, at senior level at altitude. I'm not sure there really has. I mean, you know, that it, it, it provides all sorts of challenges which uh, create an uneven playing field. So it is a controversial issue. This uh, 5,000 though, well, lots of young talent on display. And, uh, Krop there being introduced to the crowd, six in the World Championships two years ago. Kiplanga, another experienced chap athlete. Only 18, but world under 20 champion already from a couple of weeks ago. Look out too for uh, Raymond Kipkore Yato, who was eighth in the World Championships back in 2001 in Edmonton, Canada. And uh, his personal best will go back to 2000, 2001. I shall be interested to see how he goes here. Edward Zakayo Pingua of Kenya is also in this one. He was the Commonwealth bronze medalist over 5,000. Won the world junior title, world under 20 title back in 2018. Apparently, Pingua got a Commonwealth bronze on the Gold Coast three years ago when he was 16 years old. Letting the pacemaker early on, is looking for around 238 for the first 2,000, for the first 1,000 and maintaining that tempo for about 63 per lap. And they're looking, they're hoping, this race can go under 13.10. The meeting record last year was a very, very respectful 13.08 by Kimeli. Well, Tim, you've already uh, touched upon some youngsters in this field. We've got six teenagers, and absolutely incredible when you go through their statistics, the quality of all of these athletes. We've got the reigning world junior champion, uh, that's Benson Kiplagat from Kenya, 18 years of age. Of course, he's familiar for this stadium. And one year younger than him, the bronze medalist, 17 years of age, Hampton Samuel for Eritrea. So definitely these youngsters mixing it up with the more experienced, established athletes. And again, you know, a lot of these teenagers particularly, they will never have competed outside of Kenya or Africa, certainly. So what a great opportunity to have some of the home stars compete against them here in uh, in Nairobi. Well, Letting leading, I don't know how much pacemaking he's done before. His personal best is 13.49, but they were looking for 63 seconds for that first lap, and it was about 67 by my clock. So much, much slower than was uh, being asked for. They should have gone through the line there in 1.36, and they went through in uh, 1.40. So he's looking very comfortable there. And, uh, it is single file for the first five or six fellas, but it's much slower than it should have been. We're looking for around 206 at 800 meters, which will be at the end of this back straight. Which is gonna be uh, several seconds outside that, I think. You can see Letting leading, the 28-year-old. He goes through 800 meters now. There's that line now, and it's 212, so it's very, very slow. They're on 13.45 pace, 66 seconds per lap. Yeah, and you know, Tim, I had one season where I, um, where I paced some races, and um, it's quite difficult and then you're, you're in this situation so you just sort of let him look round now to say you know are the field with me are they coming it is the athlete's responsibility at the end of the day to know their pace as well and if they really want to go with that pace you know they can go right up to the athlete's shoulder the pacemaker's shoulder and almost say come on like you know let's let's get on with it or not even needing to speak their presence should allow you to feel that but you know going through at that sort of speed and they're not kind of the athletes aren't right on their shoulder it definitely makes the pacemakers think well maybe the athletes don't want to go this pace so really interesting but as you said from the beginning you know they are spread out so there's nobody going up to the pacemakers and trying to push that pace on and maybe this race is just going to be more competitive rather than fast well that first kilometer was 245 13 45 tempo letting and rotate to both pacemakers kip Koech there up in the uh, leading group 
capable of uh, going with this tempo and staying with it. Kibet in third place. Michael Kibet is a 13-11 performer from a couple of years back. 13-20 this year. Ran in the uh, two miles in Eugene. Spread off to Tokyo, ran 8.18 there. It was only 10th in what was a very quick mass finish race. Anything under 8.20 for two miles is pretty useful running. But they are bunching towards the back of this group. Athletes running out from lane two, many meters extra have been covered, which uh, tells you how slow it is. And they're coming up to 1,500 meters now. They were looking for this to be well under four minutes. Oh, dear, oh, dear. And it is about 4.10 at 1,500 meters. And so slow and so cluttered at the back of the field that there was a faller there. I didn't quite see who it was. I think he got back up and is running, but it, it takes the stuffing out of you. Yeah, it does. I think it is one of the athletes that I just mentioned. I thought I saw his hip number of number four, which is Benson Kiplangat, who is the world junior champion over this distance. So uh, be interesting. Yeah, we can just see on the corner of the screen there that pink that pink shorts and yeah I can see the hip number number four so he has managed to come back to this field hopefully he can just take his time and get back to them because the pace is relatively slow well this women's uh, long jump competition continues that is uh, Brooks for the USA the 26 year old that looks pretty useful from uh, Talia Brooks she opened with a couple of no jumps, but that, if she gets the white flag, should certainly have her in the mix. She actually took off a long way from the board. She was under pressure there to get something right. <laughs> She's an ironic celebration there that she actually records a mark to Leah Brooks. Well, she looks like she's having fun with it. She's actually a heptathlete. On, uh, a heptathlete sorry, let me get my words out, Tim. Um, I was just looking at some of her personal bests. I would probably say the 100 meter hurdles is a best. She's got a personal best of 12.61 seconds. So we can forgive her for not being bang on the board every single time. Of course, she's got seven disciplines to negotiate usually, but uh, yeah, hopefully she got a mark out on that one. So six minutes on the clock. Pacemakers, Letting and Rotic sharing the work. Rotic now at the front. He is the uh, second pacemaker tasked with getting to 3,000 originally in 7.55. Well, they're way, way off that sort of tempo. I can tell you they'll be many, many seconds slower than that. And you can see them four across on the track. Again, a clear indication this just isn't quick enough. And they go through there. 6.32, something like that for six laps. So still, they're operating outside 65 seconds per lap tempo. That's getting down towards 13.30 pace. It has picked up the last couple of laps. Krop is there. He's uh, a 20-year-old who was sixth in the World Championships in 2019 at the age of 18. He ran 13.06 for a 5,000 on the roads in uh, Herzogenaurach. Where, uh, Adidas are based in Germany, about a, an hour or two's drive from Munich just last Sunday. But uh, on a 7.41 Lausanne a couple of weeks back shows he's in good form, Krop. He's biding his time. He's not prepared to take this on and push the tempo through the second half. Interesting, Jen, that uh, Kip Langat in the pink that you pointed out, the world under 20 champion, back in the mix. Yeah, he's done well, hasn't he? And he looks like he's done it quite sensibly. Obviously, we've missed uh, probably a lap of that, but certainly when we saw him coming back into the shots, he didn't look like he was sprinting, trying to make his way back to the pack. So hopefully now we can settle in the, in a roundabout fifth position that he's in, just let another couple of laps tick off. I'm not quite sure what his strengths are, what his weaknesses are. Has he got a good sprint finish? Not seeing too much of him at the moment, but I'm sure that's going to be a really good learning curve for him. You know, he's not panicked. He's got himself back there. And how can he negotiate the second half of this race? Well, 10 men in the pack. Rotic is the pacemaker. So nine athletes there as they come through 3,000 meters in what? About 808, 809. They were looking for 755, remember? So forget the times that were. Uh, perhaps rather optimistically requested a sub-13.10 clocking was requested uh, 
or hoped for. A meeting record 1308 by Kameli last year. That is mighty fast when altitude taken into account. And now the pace has picked up, there's no doubt about that. They're beginning to stretch out. There they go with, uh, what, four and a half laps to run. 8.43 there. And uh, interesting to see Benson Kiplanga, the youngster, in fourth place in the pink. Lovely relaxed looking runner, isn't he? He is. And Tim, you just mentioned about the pace picking up. And then as soon as you said that, there's all of the men are looking around again. They're just trying to look at the screen. There is a big screen there and they'll be able to see how many men have dropped off the back of this. So there still is seven at the moment. And uh, it's all to play for, isn't it? Well, they go through in about 9.15 with four laps to run. It'll be interesting to see what they can cover this last mile in. Kimeli leads fourth in Tokyo. Nicholas Kipkore Kimeli. Also a world championship finalist in Doha, where he finished in eighth place two years back. He was only 20 then. He's still only 22, of course. 7.43, he ran in Lausanne for 3,000 metres. And then 27.22 for a road 10K in that... Uh, German race last weekend. So he's in fabulous form, is Kameli. He's strong. He is a 12.51 performer at his absolute best. That was uh, last year in Monaco. He's run 12.59 this year. So he's one of the select group who's broken 13 minutes this season. He too looks quite relaxed, just letting these last few laps unfold here. Glancing up at the big screen. Doesn't look stressed, does he? He doesn't, and it's been interesting to see that he doesn't want to relinquish that lead as well. He's put himself at the front. Being at the front allows him to control it. It allows him to control any moves. It allows him to react to anything. And, uh, yeah, he seems like he wants to be at the front with three laps to go. Also there is uh, Abtom Samuel, the bronze medalist. He has three on his hip, the world under 20 bronze medalist only 17 but that bronze medal came at 3,000 meters in the world under 20s three weeks ago he, the uh, world under 20s doesn't have a 10,000 it has a 3,000 and a 5,000 but he has run 1323 which on paper has him solid but uh, quite a lot slower than the likes of Kibet and crop who's a 1303 performer crop is still there into the straight now with just over two laps to run and uh, also in the mix is the letter. Two laps to run then. 11.24 there. There's been a significant acceleration over these last uh, couple of laps. And now they're a little bit stretch out, stretched out. Yeah, Camille, it still is leading this one. Crop is now taking closer contention. He'll be aware that he can't let too much distance go, and uh, we're down to four. Well, it's the Eritrean Hampton Samuel Kaleta, who is uh, also in there. And uh, fascinating to watch Kip Langat, how he handles this, because I said that that fall must have taken the stuffing out of him. Only if I've ever fell, what, fell once in a race, mid-race in the 3,000 meters, and it absolutely finished me off. I was able to complete the race, but it uh, really gave me a thump in the chest, and it's so hard to get up and look up, and you've lost 25 meters. They come to the belt this time, though, and it's cropped for the first time who's hit the front from Kimeli. Kip Lang up there, the world under 20 champion. Last time he raced in this arena, he crossed the line in first place. Down the back straight now. And uh, Kaleta in fourth place, just beginning to lose ground. The Eritrean who took that bronze medal in the 3,000 is down the back straight. It begins to wind up. Still going strongly is Krop. Krop in the lead from Kip Langa. 200 to run. And Kimeli is still there. And Kip Langa has Krop in his sights, begins to swing wide. Who's got the speed down the home straight? Because this has been a tactical run for men of this calibre. Krop, has he got another gear? I think he might have. Kip Langat, the youngster, needs more training in those legs. He is only 18, 
and he's struggling now that the pressure is on. It's Krupp from Kameli. Kameli's left in a little bit late. Krupp wins 13 24 there, or 13 23 50 actually. The Krupp stops at. I got the last mile at a click outside 410, the last four laps. It got, got significantly quicker in the closing stages. Good running from these fellas. Nothing like the uh, 1308 from Kimeli, but a real race to the tape there, and uh, great stuff from Krop, Jakob Krop, or Jacob Krop, who has more experience perhaps than the others. This one enabled him to stay clear, kick hard, and he knew he had the legs down the home straight. You always have to save a little bit uh, for that home straight. Well, it certainly was a great race, and they actually pulled it back significantly in the end, didn't they? I think that last mile certainly helped. 13.23 in the end, where at one point we were looking at 14 minutes with the way that the pace started. But uh, yeah, what is it about these young African athletes? They can just work so hard and still sprint. Uh, at the finish and crop you know we talked about the experience but he's still 20 years of age himself um, one of those races were even up to a lap to go you just didn't know which way that race was going to go so real real competitive competition well he has his uh, winner's reward 50,000 shillings it's about four, 300 30 UK pounds. It may not be a lot in uh, Europe for many people, but uh, in Kenya, it's a very nice payday for some of these youngsters. Oh, we can see the fall there. Oh, and he did so well, Tim. Um, as you said, you know, you've experienced that fall. It can really take the wind out of you and make your legs really, really heavy. And uh, he certainly looked like he coped with it extremely well. It was just. That, like you say a little bit of experience a little bit more training lacking that last hundred meters but he he ran incredibly well did the youngster well those three getting away from coletta on the final lap and it was a real dust up down the home straight but uh Klopp, well he's a 730 performer at 3000 he has marvelous speed endurance and his experience keeping him clear there with Kimeli second and the young Benson Kiplangat what a future he's got that young man in third place I mean fabulous to have got himself into a battle for the win down the home straight considering he fell pretty early in the race it was a good roll a sort of judo roll if you like I can remember that from my judo days when I was uh, a very young teenager didn't uh, thump into the track too badly 